No more fucking around. It's Wild Style Radio. We're going to harmonize Wild with that guy. Yeah! Welcome back to the Stand Up and Shout Rock Show. Coming to you live from Salisbury Center Studios in Manassas, Virginia, on the Wild Style Network, fueled by Monster Energy. And it is the Sunday Ruined edition of the Stand Up and Shout Rock Show. This is the whole reason that it's Sunday Ruined. Sunday Ruined is on the couch. So we're back with our old friends, Age Ruined. Yeah, we're great. It's great yeah, to be here. Yeah, I, I, what do you, I don't, I, I lost count. How many times you've been here? <laughs> I mean, I, I say that we're at four to five, at least once, because at least once. he was here on Thursday. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that was Daniel. We got so I, I think we're pushing band, four or five at yeah. this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. easily. And mm-hmm. we brought up the infamous. We you always go back to the Pringles pairing. Yeah, we we talked about that already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I already scratched that itch. <laughs> That's out of the way. You know I mean? Yeah, so obviously you guys are headlining this evening of metal. We got mm-hmm. Anesthesiac on stage right now, which we just interviewed them. Good young kids. Nice to see Talk young to rock music continuing on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, talk, I was talk about the show. Tonight. I was just out there talking to their guitar player. He's, uh, I was like, man, this amplifier, it's got a DSL, so it's a Marshall, it's mm-hmm. a head that, and um, he's like, yeah, I just picked that up. I was like, dude, that's <laughs> that amp. I've been using one of those amps. And we were just talking last night. We were setting up, and I was like, man, I've been playing this this particular head for like twenty five years. Right, it's and, older than you. Yes, <laughs> it is. Yes. Uh-huh. In amp years. I meant, I meant the kid, not you. Uh, yeah, exactly. both. Here he in amp years, and and yeah, so it was really cool. He was real stoked to be, you know, playing yeah. that amp, and I was like, yeah, man, I remember when I got one of these. I was like, yes. <laughs> so they, yeah, it was sound checking. They sounded really cool. Um, so we were down there. We saw, I don't know, was, maybe two songs before uh, we ran up here. Yeah, yeah, nice, noisy, grindy, yeah. Uh, yeah. really good metal. Yeah, absolutely cranking out some sabbath right now uh, yeah it was, yeah they, they told us that was going to happen yep yeah all right so we heard from daniel about your recording processes that you're doing to put together you know new music that's about to be released from major ruin that we're all looking forward to but i want to hear from the rest of you so how has like the past few months been how's recording been how is you know the, the, your your take on your creative process for building this new music coming along. You want to do it chronologically? <laughs> sure. Okay, because this is, we can talk a little bit about recording with it as a band. So we start, usually bands will go into the studio and the first thing you lay down are drums. Uh-huh. So Hendrick over here, we uh, he and I drove down to Richmond. Ben met us down there. Um, and, and we can talk about uh, doing the drums down there in Richmond, Hendrick. Yeah. How was it? How was the experience? Uh, it was fun. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I think it, uh, we spent three days uh-huh. doing drums, tracking it. Sounds big. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that room was really cool. Yeah. Um, we recorded at a place called The Bakery. Um, this dude named Will, and he's got this room set up that's got, like, I don't know, like a lot of woodwork in it, right? Yeah. 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 Decent yeah. ambience yeah. to All the right. room. <laughs> Brought out it a lot set of the drums. Mood. Yeah. It set the mood. Yeah, hit a bunch you of drums until we found some good strip stuff. Mall in a, or like, or I don't know, what you call a strip mall like an alley, and it's so deceiving. You walk up there, and it's, you walk in, it's just white. Almost feels like you walk maybe to a jail cell or something. Huh. And then you open it up, and like it's, it's all beautiful woodwork. Wow. I mean, it's, just, it's an amazing place. An amazing place. Yeah. So why is it called the bakery? I thought he said that the place used. Bakery. Yeah, yeah, like it, yeah, it was formerly. Uh, I mean, it's sounding like a reception hall, you know, like from you know how you're describing it. So I didn't know if it was a an, right, like an actual bakery, or it was just. I think it been described it pretty well. It was like a a couple blocks off. Well, you used to live in Richmond, right? You know that area. Um, it was off of what Boulevard or something? Is the... Yeah, off of Boulevard. Uh, kind of near the, the ballpark. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I, I think it maybe just used to be a bakery. But 
they have rebuilt the entire inside of this. It's kind of like you're just looking at the shell of a building. Mm-hmm. You walk in, and it's like, whoa, this is really like state of the kind of like what you're looking at here. You, you wouldn't know this was a movie theater. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice. But uh, so, I mean, Jonathan, how was things on your end, you know, in this in the past couple months? was Not bad. Not um, bad? First day I went in, I was a little nervous. And then uh, after that, I felt like um, we settled in and, um, I don't know, just went in there prepared and uh, ready to go. I think all of us were uh, pretty well we had our parts down and we went in there and we were ready to get it done and like uh-huh. we went in there i mean and yeah. we knocked it out so. how many amps did we bring to try <laughs> <laughs> we uh <laughs> brought like maybe 10 to try out and the, the guy mike we we're working with is like no no that one he, he listened to him for like three seconds like that's not it <laughs> and then uh we ended up using for all the gear nerds we used a soldano 30 watt uh yeah yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, which uh, a- after that, like we tracked with these Soldano, with that head, and <laughs> both Jonathan and I now play Soldano. So it was like this thing sounds so freaking good, and, like <laughs> definition in the notes, sure, you know, and but loud and, and gnarly. And so yeah, that's really cool. And Ben, you know, I'm gonna pivot back to you here for a couple seconds because Daniel did come in when he came in was talking to us about this show on Thursday. He did play at least Kevin and I. Some of the we got some some snippets, you know, so to speak, of the of the new music, and you were taking some different vocal approaches. So tell us about that and what the, how that felt for you. Yeah, it was, it was definitely something uh, something new, something different. Uh, I think it just shows the you know when, when it does get released and everybody gets to hear it, it shows how much we've grown, you know, uh-huh. or how much we're willing to just not sit inside of, you know certain box right and you were stepping outside of your comfort yeah, yeah zone. for sure yeah. for sure yeah. and it was so much fun you know just to get get an experiment with new things and you know not having to be inside this niche or you know mm-hmm. limited i guess to say right but um, yeah no no i mean it was all i could say was it was really fun man yeah, yeah. yeah I, nice. I, I can't wait for everybody here yeah how much of the material was already written before you went into the studio or were you building some of the the songs while you were there I'd say uh, we were probably, you know, 80%. I, I, me personally, I was probably about 80% done before uh, starting. You know, going in there, there was some, you know, changes in uh, writing along the way. But, um, but yeah, you know, I had, uh, <clears throat> being the last to go, you know, I had tons of time to prepare and, you know, my little home studio just sure. over and over and over and over, mm-hmm. you know, until I was in the ballpark of what I wanted to be, you know. Mm-hmm. Cool. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. We prepared for this, I would say, more. I mean, I don't know. You, Maybe Absolute Vengeance was pretty prepared when you guys went in. But um, really, like, over the top prepared. Uh-huh. I mean, we had reiterated these songs. Hendrick, I don't know. We started playing some of these songs like three years ago, right? Yeah. Yeah, Traveler and Heavy as the Crown. Been long before they had names, of course. Right. You know, Ben comes in with the words, and then they start getting titled. So Lots of demoing. Yeah, like we we have a song, <laughs> so funny. We have a song called "The Traveler," and um, I would say for probably three years that song was called "Bow Scowl." Oh, <laughs> yeah, and it's just because the riff. That's a leap. Yeah, so so the guitar riff goes. <laughs> That's a little... The guitar riff goes "Bow Scowl, Bow Scowl, Scowl." You know what I mean? So like we were just like, yeah, it's called "Bow Scowl." And that's what we called it. Like literally, it's, and so. You, if you ever talk to bands, you ask them about how they title their song. Like, ask them what it's called before that, because yeah. it's always going to be like new, new song. song. Yeah, new, newest. Yeah, new newest because right. you already have new. <laughs> or it'll be like long song, or like it's always so like generic, you know. Uh-huh. And so. then once they do get titles. Then you got these knuckleheads that change the the name on you. So we're like we're trying to organize everything in our like you know we're really organizing. We use Google Drive, some mm-hmm. Dropbox, but generally we 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 as a team kind of use Google Drive as our go to. Huh. And um, all of a sudden the song's got a different name, and I'm thinking like they're, so they're practicing like yeah let's play like you know I think it was Passenger was one that got renamed. Yeah. It was called um, do you remember what it was called before? Sacred. Sacred, yeah, yeah so. something like that. Uh-huh. So. Like, I don't even know what that is. Like, you're telling me some new song name. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, Just wait, yeah. man. The yeah. album's not out, out yeah. yet. Right, so yeah, yeah, exactly. Beware. You know? 
There may be more changes to come. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, you asked about Ben's approach this time, and I think what was really cool about it for a lot of us is that then it, then you hear what Ben's idea is, and you're like, oh, my man, what am I? What if I did this with guitar? And it, despite going in totally prepared, you're still re, like sure. shopping the songs, like sure. workshopping, workshopping, and reiterating and reiterating until, mm-hmm. I mean, it, at a vir- literally at a certain point, you're just like, if we keep doing this, we're never going to finish. Like we right. have to be call ourselves done. You know? Right, right. So um, that's sort of that's where we ended. Like a few weeks ago, it was like, all right, I think, you know, after you look at the the recording session, there's like a hundred tracks or whatever it ended up with, and you're right. like, there's just so much material here to for someone to have to go through and decide yes what gets loud and what doesn't but um we we got to that point and, and it's it's awesome now so. and i was i was going to ask you about that if there was things on the cutting room floor you know that you wish weren't on the cutting room floor so to speak you know like is there some lingering b-sides you know if you think back in the old concepts of b-sides you know, we get some songs that at least some artists that you're like damn why didn't you put that on the album you know like is there anything kind of sitting out there like that you know that, that what we have that would re- the answer to that is actually no. We don't okay, have good. anything that we decided not. Everything that we put on this is one thousand times better than anything we could. Like I know I'm speaking for the the whole group here, better than we could have imagined. And they're all like you hear it and you're like I can't believe we did that. It's like it's just really really great. Now you talk about B size. We've actually kicked around the idea of some newer some ideas so we started writing these songs like three years ago and like you know since then we've written new songs new ideas that would be the closest equivalent but i think it rather than i mean we have a, a few several months ahead of us of promoting this new yeah. this new record and getting out there yep. focusing really focusing on and and the selfish side of all of you know of me and everyone is that we want to have fun playing these songs now of so course. um it, it they're not old to us and you know all of that stuff that's sitting on the hopper right is ready to go as soon as we're ready to make that move right and you have four of those songs that you're playing tonight if i remember that from thursday daniel is that right is that still the same on the set list yeah 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 all right all right i didn't know like there's still some eyes floating Uh, well (laughs) i think the reason that three of them yeah and then the the fourth one is uh just a newer version of an old song okay re-recorded on this same album okay that's cool. right okay. yes i do remember daniel speaking to that too so yeah so tell us about that song how, how old is that song that song was originally on i think the uh winner's woes yeah, album uh-huh. 22 <laughs> uh-huh. so, 2002 i think oh. in 2000 i think maybe uh, three all right okay 2003 and, so it's like a 20 year old jammer do you feel differently playing that song now than you did? Like, in other words, as you maybe grow, mature, had some different life experiences that may have impacted some of the life experiences that may have driven that song to be written. Has that changed? I, I think to- it feels, it just feels, the way we play it now, it just feels right. Okay. Uh, you know, that we went back, like we said, we re-recorded this version, but we never had this version with this core group of members on it okay and so going along with recording this new album i think uh and the also the level of kind of uh preparedness that we had having uh done pre-production kind of demos and demos and and so forth of these songs that um going in it it didn't i felt it just felt kind of easy kind of going coming all together Uh and what i mean by that is that i think that this reflects a little bit of everybody's of everybody's kind of uh soul or their 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 color that they give into the the album overall okay and just this unit together we mesh so well on this album that Uh i think everything kind of shines so yeah it's going to be a an eye opener or an ear opener as well (laughs) listening yeah love it all right so can we shift gears on you guys yeah you know is is there anything you want to add because we don't want to do a disservice because we are excited about you know your album release and the new music that's coming out so we still have some work to do so okay 
And, and you know, I know this will not be the last time that you guys will be in the studio and we'll be talking. So, yep, yeah, anything in between, you know, we are, we are free to continue talking about. But we have to, uh, we we Kevin and I were talking. You know, we always kind of we we kind of do these games on our own, and we drive conversation about rock and rock happenings and rock music. And then we were kind of talking just recently, like, wouldn't it be fun to throw some of this at the bands tonight? And so you might have saw it with the Anesthesiac because we had this conversation with them. I think it's an interesting, if you watch probably our shows in succession with different bands, the different perspectives and answers that you're going to get yep. because we, we just basically made a basic <laughs> would-you-rather game. Just would-you-rather this, would-you-rather that. But we sent it around general admission rock shows. General yeah. admission and sold out rock shows, right? Because it's a common experience, and you guys have probably had a lot of those experiences. Being slightly older than anesthesiac, we've had a lot of those experiences. So, I'd be interested to hear your answers, especially compared to the answers that we just heard from that band. Okay. So we'll do a little. Would you rather, if you don't mind? Is that All cool? Right. Okay. okay. All right. Bring All right. it on. All right. All right. So you see, would you rather in the on the screen in front of you, Kevin? Kevin's an excellent reader, much better <laughs> than I am. Would you rather attend a sold out seated show? Or attend a sold out general admission show. Getting to the heart of general admission. Sold out. Uh, general admission, because a sold out seated show would probably be uh, really expensive and probably be like a. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these days shows are point. ridiculous. Yeah. And then point. also, a seated show is probably going to be some kind of band, you know, like Taylor Swift, something like <laughs> pop music. I mean, like, not no disrespect to her. It's just not going to be, uh, you know, not as exciting. Yeah, yeah. not as yeah. exciting. Yeah, the energy, like the, the yeah, but the money, like I, I never thought of that. I mean, we didn't talk about that. Nope. Yeah, so that's it is a good point. General standing shows are cheaper than seated shows for sure. Yeah, well, you get a, most clubs are going to be that way, or yeah, sometimes this economy, Jiffy Lube is you know, that we have right now. This economy, you gotta yeah, gotta watch your money. Yeah. <laughs> Ben, I didn't mean to cut you off. Were you going to say something? Nope, nope. You went, every, everybody, like, so that's a unanimous answer? I was going to go general. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and but there are, like, hybrid shows where, like, the floor is general admission. Right. I mean, I've yeah. been to, I've uh, seen Iron Maiden in a seated, you know, and it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. And I've also seen Iron Maiden in the pit, like the, you know, the yep. whatever yep. their high Last end. time we saw yeah. them. Oh, no, not the last time. The time before when they were at Jiffy, the, the orchestra was, yes, ge- was general, general admission. admission. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. That was good. Yeah. The, the nice thing, though, I mean, my argument back against seated is you can be late. You know, like you're going to get your spot. Yeah. You know, you're allowed to, you know, kind of roll. You don't have to be there, like, immediately to get, you know, if you wanted to get to the front, which leads us to the next question. Because we're always late. <laughs> we could be a little late. Oh, and, oh, Would you rather stand in front of the stage of a general admission sold-out show or stand in the back of the crowd? A sold out general admission show. Oh do you, boy! Yeah, do you linger? <laughs> yeah, do you get up there? Do you get I in? Mean, it? Are you asking? <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. I mean, I'm going to be real. Are you asking me now or asking me 20 years ago? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So, well, so like know, the, the yeah. band that we just had in here was now, graduating now high school. Now I'm going to stay back by the bar. Exactly. You know, before yeah. I was up there getting yep. you know, a little dirty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. Yeah, uh-huh. that's yeah. us. I'm gonna be uh-huh. at the back. I don't want to damage my hearing. I don't want to get <laughs> this smashed. Is so funny. <laughs> Yeah, I really. It depends on who it is, too. I was gonna say I could like, be driven to get up front. You I know could. I mean? You could. Well, you and, and so there's yeah. there's also like your mind goes quickly too when you say like sold out general admission. Like you kind of think of like a like a large venue, like a like a stadium or like yeah, you know, like or like a college, like a university, like you know, sort of thing. But like smaller venues, like like this place, yeah, yeah. could easily have a thousand people sold out show yep. and if it was a band that i was like real pumped about that was uh-huh. coming through and and then i just like love their song i'm i might just run up front and like, gotta get up there that's the you know then well even daniel and what me was, just kind of what like, the other band brought up was the fillmore which tends yeah. to oversell their general admission and yeah. it's not a big venue yeah but i agree now yeah. i would want to be back near the bar because if i've had a few cocktails and i'm in the front and I got to go to the bathroom. Then I got to try and fight and get back to my spot. But man, there's you're... just so much fun to be had, like just singing along and like, yeah, you yeah. know, fist pumps and all that. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I like getting sweaty and having fun. Like I can that. get up there still too. It depends, yep. but it depends. It depends on the show. So like, that's what I'm saying. It really, it really, to me, it's like, it, who is it? What's, what kind of audience is like, if it's, 
again, like a like a venue like this that would be a thousand of my peers that sold uh-huh. out and like we're all there to just party and have fun. That's awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm totally up front. If it's like uh you know, and it's maybe like something that's a little bit more mainstream that might in, in invite an audience, not invite, but attract an audience without a lot of the same background, like people that have been to shows and like know like how to treat each other in the pit and like, you know, that type of thing. Kevin was bringing then, that up. Then you might get yourself in a situation where you're like, someone might throw a fist or like you know not not intentionally but then it could turn south yes. whereas like if it's you know if a lot of people that have been to show after show after show and know like there's this unwritten code yes then it's just a lot of fun yes you know? yeah yeah like uh, that Ke- sort of takes us to our next question it does take us to the next question and actually some points that kevin made in the last conversation with those kids so uh we'll, we'll just go right to it john we'll jump into the next one would you rather be in the mosh pit or be in the rim on the rim of the mosh pit. If you're getting up in the bins, bins in the back, so he doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this this is an interesting one for a band like ours because mosh pits and dance floors can have, again, also different connotations, like yeah. depending on what your background is. You know, like there's like the mosh pit where people are kind of slamming into each other and then with like hardcore shows, there are like freestyle kickboxers out yes. that like do yeah. spin kicks and things like that yes um i'm not a good enough dancer to know how to do any of that <laughs> would look like a fool and would also you know hurt myself really bad so so definitely on the on the rim or whatever watching these guys but definitely rooting them on like helping you know uh-huh. helping pick scoop people up off the floor or whatever. <laughs> um but yeah like it's just a different vibe if you're at like a you know, like a mainstream festival or something, the mosh pits are, are different. Yeah. 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 Well, that's a Kevin. Kevin, you were talking about the etiquette. And I don't know if you guys, you know, been around, we've been around for a little bit, right? Like when you were talking about basically the, your, your jock the approach. code. Yes. Like the, the jock rock approach to moshing is very different than kind of original moshing, like yeah. so to speak. Right. Like exactly. Night. Yeah. But yet you're getting more. I was punchy. trying not to put labels on anyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. No. Be a little yeah. friendly about it, but yeah, exactly. I'm I mean, not that's afraid. what we're talking. Yeah, kind of change with you know the early 2000s Limp Biscuit, yeah. those bands new that metal like the new the metal. new metal guys are just out there looking to yeah. hurt people. Yeah. Whereas yeah. back in the day when I like to get in the pit, <laughs> we respected each other, and if a guy went down, you're grabbing him and you're yeah. pulling him up. Right. You're not yeah. kicking him in the head while he's down. Right. Which happens these days. Everybody was loving each other back then. Somewhat. Somewhat. I mean, respect. there's like some people get bad reactions too to like accidentally getting elbowed, or it's like no one's there to really hurt each other. Well, right. Maybe someone, uh-uh. but if you do accidentally take an elbow or a knee or something, it's not just you know it's part you're you decided to go into that pit, you know, or like be up front, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, you take on a little bit of responsibility yes, too. Some of the so, risk for sure, right? Anything from you guys? Anything anywhere? Like. Uh, Definitely on the rim. <laughs> Bobbing along. Like, this, you guys are very, like, unanimous. You're a cohesive group. There's not much, you know, very, or contention. Did the recording go like this, too? It was just that easy? That, well, that's that because loving? you're not asking us which Metallica record. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save that for the next time. But it'll be a, we had it'll a, be a lot different of, band. Uh, we all had a lot of one-on-one conversations after that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Did you? Like, so what? that lingered? No. Oh, I was hoping. Uh, I was hopeful for that. No, because they all eventually agreed with me. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Next question. Next question. General Mission Show, no matter where you are, this could happen in a General Mission, especially standing show. Would you rather be next to the dude who can't stop busting badass? Or would you rather be next to the angry dude who wants to fight over the space that you're standing in? Which evil do you prefer? Can you um, <laughs> elaborate on stop busting badass? Are we talking about the guy that farting? Just, yes, that can't stop smelling. 
Oh, wow. Like he was sitting next to at the extreme Why show. would anyone answer that they would have rather that? <laughs> <laughs> but you have to be next to the brawler. That's the other choice. I mean, yeah. Is it the brawler like, or pick, the smelly guy? Nobody rathers either of these. <laughs> Nobody's right? choosing, like, exactly. this is where I want to... That's you're, why you're the picking. question's here. You in, have to pick one or the, the other. In old movie sense, it's the Sophie's Choice. You got your Sophie's Choice ahead of you. I can't. <laughs> I mean, am I guaranteed to get into a fight because, like, I'll take a punch in the face before I'm just like inhaling ass all night. You know? <laughs> I mean, let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody like so? The, the, I'll say the other anesthesiac was all about like they would take the badass over the fight over the brawl. Uh, I don't know. I could stay next to. I've been next to guys trying to fight and stuff, and uh, you know, I mean. I can hold my own, I guess, a little bit. I, don't yeah. know. I mean, I'm not gonna fight him, but I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm gonna be able to like stand there and be like, those guys are usually like trying to get a reaction. Yeah, definitely. and if you don't react, then like someone else will. Yeah. So you kind of, it's you know, it's you're up like, against that guy. You become the guy that's busting badass. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you, become, oh. you become that. Ben's <laughs> onto something. <laughs> to get him to move away. You kind of pair. If you pair these, uh-huh. these, you know, then it's either <laughs> you're one or the other, man. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't. I, you say I you say well, well, yeah, or you find the guy and you say, hey, man, uh, we got a situation to deal with over here. I will give you one. Monster Energy drink <laughs> and one tube of Pringles. <laughs> if you go stand next to this dude, he's trying to pick fight. And it's badass. I'm the lightning rod. Like I had a lot of those experiences where, like, for whatever reason, people get angry at me. You know, I don't. I don't like. I'm not fighting for space, but they want my space. I guess maybe I'm easy pickings or something. So I, it's ruined shows for me. I will yeah. say personally. Right. So I might I might have to say I'm I'm not as tough as you all. I might go with a badass guy just because, <laughs> you know, I can just shirt it. I just do one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Filter. <laughs> not being the angry, right. contentious, you know, kind of moment. That ruins the rest of the show. I mean, you just gotta go we get in the pit. I know. I, right? Then that takes care of that. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Be a little crowd surfing. Yeah. Yeah, if you crowd surf, you're up above it. You know what I mean? Yes. That's the beauty of the pit because it, it doesn't assume that there is a designated space for anyone. That space is fluid. It's right. moving right. all the time. So right. your space is no space. It's just swirling around. Yeah. All right. We have some age of ruin specific general admission. So you have your general admission showed out, sold out show here tonight. And really, these are your vantage points as performers. So not not attending a show, but performing at the show. And I'm just curious as where this is for you guys. So, of course, this is like a question that comes up in a lot of rock communities. At your sold-out Age of Ruin show and you're performing, would you rather have cameras taking pictures and recording your show or have no cameras at the show? Yeah, I think cameras. Yeah. Yeah, why not capture the moment? As well this is a no-brainer, dude. Yeah. Well, all right, maybe. So, would you, I mean, he a you know, but you gotta artists, know. There's artists out here with pretty strong opinions yeah. about there this. There are, yeah. yeah, but they've had their, you know, their photographs taken plenty of times, and they still. I'll look. go to Jack White. I mean, he's the obvious one to me. White Tool's shirts. another one. Yes, you know? yeah, Tool definitely. Um, but they're also kind of playing to like as a band to like the mystique and like the, um, but generally speaking, musicians are very conceited people yeah right you know what i mean yeah so of course we want our photographs you think we look like this because like <laughs> you know, like, like it, it takes a lot of work i know? get it too well what are you are you ever feel fearful of like a horror moment that's going to be captured or recorded you know just whatever like oh no something wicked happens on stage and <laughs> not you know, afraid of on the it. internet it lives forever Man, I mean, it's happened, yeah, but true. like, <laughs> I've fallen, I've tripped. But we, yeah. I mean, that's one thing that we have had, I guess, the luxury of more, you know, in recent years is that we we uh, document everything. We've got a lot of photos, we've got a lot of videos, and so forth. We got the GoPros and right. people's phones and stuff. So, as opposed to say twenty years ago when we were playing bands out of high school, uh-huh. and you know, you're lucky if somebody videotaped it for example right pablo who early on he can tell you all about it oh this is good i i do have some of the old age of ruin footage like some of the footage where there's fire breathers and other exciting really? things happening 
And uh, it was an exciting time for us because, as he was saying, we didn't have the plethora of cameras that we have now. So right. it was pretty cool to just get any footage of a show. Yeah, um, right. So know. is this on tape? I think it's uh, on it tape. It is on digital tape. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it was still tape. Right. But we were getting to where, you know, the, the final product was viewed on a computer. Sure. It wasn't really like we were, I guess we were sharing the VHS tapes, but that was right. more for fun. Right. Um, but that's where we were starting to be able to actually send each other copies of the videos and right. uh, download them. The old Firewire. You know those Firewire? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the, actually this camera uh, that I recorded with did use Firewire to import the footage. Yeah, yeah. So, good call. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice. But then, I mean, you were but, running but you up were, against, like, you, you, you know, if you, 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 you couldn't just put it on YouTube. It was like you paid for the hosting, uh-huh. which included how much upload and download, like, you're paying for all of that bandwidth. Right. So it was expensive. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, the tapes were, you, you wouldn't want to tape over. You know, there's just, like, like digital media now is so freaking cheap. Yeah. That you were still living in a time where, like, you're, it's, a, it's a huge expense. Sure. And you were in control. You know, like, you were in control of what was being seen. It's not like people with cameras that's instantly <laughs> uploaded and instantly streamed out elsewhere. So. Yeah, but I think that, you know, especially now, it's great to have that much footage. We get uh-huh. used to seeing it. I think we get used to seeing ourselves on camera. Bands uh-huh. get used to seeing themselves on camera. Like, I definitely enjoy it now when occasionally I'll see myself recording a show, uh-huh. but I'm just passing through someone else's cell phone image. Uh-huh. You know, it's yeah. a cool yeah. experience. Yeah. And I think we all just get used to being on camera, so we share more. All right. So I think that's a huge benefit. Right. I think we all enjoy having cameras at shows. Okay. So in, in the sense of tool and in the sense of Jack White, then it's not taking away from the show because that's their, their that would be the counter argument that... The people are re- too busy recording the show and looking at the show through the screen, so they're not participating in the show. Don't I, feel that. Yeah, I mean, I get that. I, I remember the first few times I went over to you know Europe and was you know not only visiting friends and you know going you know doing music stuff, but just going also as a tourist. Like, hey, I'm in Paris. I'm going to go to the Louvre or you know Versailles or something, and just see these people that are. They're, they're experiencing the whole thing behind a camera. Right. And, you know, back then it was digital also then, but, like, you know, digital cameras where you still had to Square, hold it up like, like this. Little, yeah. yeah, this, yeah. And, um, you know, it, still film. You still see some people take it. But generally you would see that and you'd be like, man, you're not even here. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, there's better photographers out there. You're not going to take that mind-blowing photograph that's going to be on the cover of Time magazine. Right while you're here and you're not even experiencing it. Right. So I understand that, that perspective, that point of view, but it's also like, what do you want? You, do you are you trying to like teach them a lesson so that they'll experience it? Cause that's who they are. And they're right, just, that's, right. they're going to do that. Right. So focus on the people that are there to experience it. Sure. And don't get too bummed out about it is my thing. I mean, um, I, I think, I think there's that excitement, about wanting to share that moment like yeah because you know i i, I can think of yeah. uh, every show that i've been to where i've been so excited and i've just taken some pictures or a snippet of video because i'm it. like I'm that, i want I'm to person. show my like i want everyone to be jealous of me right now like, <laughs> look what i'm doing well, and you're me. not here but like you know but then it then you put it down because you're like yeah. i think here. there's there's a limit to how far you go with it because yeah. like shows we go to as a fan you know Generally, not. I'm not a performer, but I'm also not a tall person. So when we go to a general admission show and you got some jackass that starts at the beginning of the show <laughs> and is recording the whole thing, yeah. and I can't see around him, to me, that ruins my experience. So, But, yeah, I, I take pictures, snippets, and I think when you go beyond and you're just recording the whole thing, to me, mm. I'm not a fan of that. Yeah. We haven't talked about this. Like, I feel like, and I feel like we could have talked about this. It was in my back pocket topic, you know, for maybe longer discussion, whatever. But I feel like that's the concert shirt of this day and age is going and taking those pictures, yeah. putting it up on your social media. Yeah. Because you guys remember when you didn't have that, mm-hmm. you know, you bought these and you wore them the next day. I had every you know? date and, on the back. Yeah, the right, door. right. So that proved, you know, you were there the night before and that was what you were talking about. In Except school. that those t-shirts were made on the lowest quality. So you, you could, right. you could only wear that shirt two, three times. <laughs> you right. you'd, you'd put it in the wash and the whole thing would fall apart. Yeah. 
Whereas social media now, I mean, those pictures stay they stay there forever. Yes. Except then again, I guess they do get scrubbed down to way bottom, and you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's you know, Kevin knows this too. So I'm real particular. You're bringing that up too about fabrics. So like, I've gotten to that age. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I call them the nipple chafing shirts. Oh. You know what I mean? That yeah. thick, cheap fabric that you know mm-hmm. rubs you raw. But like to me, it started with the Foo Fighters. Like they had the best tri-blend nice. <laughs> soft fabric shirts. Nice. <laughs> and I'm wearing it just for that reason because I'm that old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, we do the same when we get you know our merch. We make sure. I mean, uh, we're not getting. We always make sure to invest in something high quality because right, because right. for the same reason. You know, we, I I think that we take the same approach maybe with the music too is we always would write the songs you know like Hendrick and I have talked about this we just write the songs that we want to hear mm-hmm. like how do we make this song sound like something that we would like and be like stoked about it yeah same thing with the merch like I would right. like want right. something I would I would be I don't want to embarrass myself by like pulling in fact I it, funny enough we ordered a batch of shirts that we just are giving away like we can't give them away in the like <laughs> because they're so like disgraceful like they ended up being so they're like sleeveless which i was super stoked about because uh-huh. i mean check it out like you know you yeah, gotta yeah. have the gun so yeah. um and but but the like but the material was like shiny or something it was mm-hmm. like not what we expected mm-hmm. and um you know it's sort of disappointing yeah i feel like like the first wave of British metal bands, like your your Maidens and your Motorheads, like they embrace the nipple chafers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they are not going to go away from that, you know, raw, heavy, hard hitting, <laughs> just part of the the swag of it. Cheaper you know? and in bulk. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's just how they roll. Yeah. Um, what's harder is trying to size it all because depending on what the material is and what the brand is, like yeah. a small or a medium. Yeah. Herb large. They don't mean the same thing. Yeah. It's like, yeah. what? Yeah. I swear I fit into, you know, whatever. So. <laughs> Sorry about that tangent. That was totally off uh, the camera. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, you know, that's how we roll with you guys. Yeah. All right. We, we got hit the one, last one. We got one more. We got one more for you guys. And we'll get you out of here so we can get you back into the show. Uh, wait a minute. I see looking over John's shoulder. I think John went backwards. Well, while he's doing that, just speaking of the show, just uh, to plug it for a minute. Yeah, we do have Born of Plagues. It's about to get on. Friends of ours from Baltimore, Maryland, sort of a doom doom band. And then Beggars is uh, from Richmond, Virginia. We talked about them on Thursday. They're they're really good, like just energetic, hardcore. Uh And they'll be up next, and then uh, then we'll be out. So yeah, Um, and we haven't talked to them yet. So we were going to talk to them. We're glad we grabbed you guys now because we're going to talk to them after they cool. finish their set. Nice. Yep. Yeah. All right, so just real quick, when you get out there tonight, your next Would You Rather situation, just so people would know, and this is just a curiosity question almost, would you rather have people at an Age of Ruin show headbanging to Age of Ruin music or moshing to Age of Ruin music? Why would you pick? I mean, why would there have to be both? Uh, you know, of course. I, I was gonna say, does yeah, it yeah, matter? Would you rather? When I'm doing both at the same time, just have fun and come out and enjoy themselves. Love it. Yeah, that was I really, think that's the best answer. I gotta admit, that was kind of a setup for that answer because I figured you guys were gonna answer that way. So that was like a peace, love, and happiness yeah, answer. Yeah, so, like, I think that is the best way. That. I mean, I'm thinking of situ- situations though, man. If I got an entire crowd that is synchronized head head banging, yeah. <laughs> that, that I cool. think that could be the ultimate thing, man. Just <laughs> that'd be cool. Just, See your hair. All right, so the gauntlet's been thrown down. We, we're gonna make that happen tonight. Synchronized head See your hair, man. Yeah. I think I think you put it best is just whatever makes floats your boat. You know, Love you it. don't, you don't, you know. I know people that have been, man. I've hurt myself head banging before, yeah. and you know, um, it doesn't matter as long as you're there having fun. Of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, I'm thinking, thinking about that moshing situation with the cameras. You know, moshing cures all. Like, we were talking about that a couple Would You Rathers back ago. Like, you can't camera in a mosh pit, right? Like, right. Like, takes care of that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know, speaking of the etiquette, you always got to look out for the camera guys. Yeah. Get yeah. it. You don't, you know, don't get in their way. Don't hit, hurt their equipment. The actual camera guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're there for a reason. The they're, they're working. They're just like the, the musicians. They're there to, of course. you know, document and, you know, um, and everyone knows that generally. So. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. Oh, we-
always great. Always great. Yeah. Appreciate Thanks it. for having Thanks us for again, us. and uh, we'll, we'll look forward to next time. I'm, I'm stoked to go see these guys play. So of course. Um, We'll, we'll head on down. And you guys know where this will all be. We'll be in the same spot, Wild Style Network. We'll tag all of your social media there, too, so people can find you. And, um, you know, this is live, so if people are listening and they're not here, they should be here. Yep, so, so come um, on down. You know, just a reminder to get on down, because there's nothing like live rock and roll. That's yeah. right. Thanks, guys. Thanks again. Thank you. We'll be right back. Rock that and roll. Good.